On SNG Daily, we'll tell you about the chaos at UK's airports and the devastation of the Brazil floods. But let's begin with news from North Korea. Kim Jong-un paid respects to Kim Ki-nam, who was one of North Korea's longest-serving officials. In fact, he had worked with all three generations of the Kim dynasty, starting with Kim Jong-un's grandfather and founder of North Korea, Kim Il-sung. Kim Ki-nam was part of the core group of loyal officials who headed the propaganda machinery and cemented the political legitimacy of the rulers of this closed state. He was among the few officials to have visited South Korea, leading a funeral delegation in 2009 after the death of President Kim Dae-ung, who championed the sunshine policy and opened an era of reconciliation with Pyongyang. He became the deputy chief of the propaganda unit in 1966, then chief during Kim Il-sung's rule. He retired in 2017. Hamas has said there will be no ceasefire if Israel continues with its aggression in Gaza. Hours before Israel started what it called a precision counter-terrorism operation in East Rafah, Hamas had agreed to the terms of a three-phase ceasefire. But Israel had turned it down, saying it didn't meet its demands. Israel forces have seized control of the Rafah border in Gaza, which has now cut off crucial aid that gets into the enclave from the south. Benjamin Netanyahu has said the operation in Rafah is a limited one and aimed at dismantling Hamas's infrastructure. Meanwhile, the US has held back a shipment of weapons headed for Israel. An official told Reuters that it has paused a shipment last week. The shipment included Boeing-made joint direct attack munitions that convert dumb bombs into precision-guided ones and also includes small diameter bombs. An agreement between the government of Israel and the leadership of Hamas is essential to stop the unbearable suffering of Palestinians in Gaza and of the hostages and their families. It would be tragic if weeks of intense diplomatic activity for peace in Gaza yield no ceasefire, no release of hostages and a devastating offensive in Rafah. Porn star Stormy Daniels took the stand in Donald Trump's hush money case in New York and gave out intricate details of her sexual encounter with the former president. Her testimony went on for many hours, in which the 45-year-old also detailed the hush money deal that was signed so that her story would stay out of the public domain in 2016 before the elections that sent Donald Trump to the White House. She said when the details of the hush money deal went public, her life descended into chaos and she was outcast even at home. Trump's lawyers used Stormy Daniels' testimony to ask for a mistrial, saying the details, like Trump didn't wear a condom, would serve no purpose other than to inflame the jury members. The judge did not agree to the mistrial appeal. Now Trump's lawyers then sought to discredit her testimony in the cross-examination. This was a very big day. A very revealing day. As you see, their case is totally falling apart. They have nothing on books and records, and even something that should bear very little relationship to the case. Uh, it's just a disaster for the uh, DA, for the Soros back DA. It's a disaster. This whole case is just a disaster. Long lines and chaos welcomed passengers at many airports across the United Kingdom on the night of May 7, after the automated passport control system encountered a technical glitch. The outage that followed saw the lines getting longer and people's patience getting shorter. The problem was reported across multiple airports like Heathrow, Gatwick, Stansted in London, Edinburgh in Scotland and Manchester in Northern England. The manual passport control also meant that incoming passengers had to wait for a long time before they could clear border control. Before this, the automated border gate system crashed in May 2023, witnessing similar scenes and delays. The problem has now been resolved and the UK Home Office has said 
the outage was not due to any cyber attack. It has also said no border security was compromised when the systems went down. There were a lot of angry, disgruntled, tired passengers, a lot of people coming in from long flights who just wanted to get home. So there were a lot of frustrated people, understandably, and no one was being given any information. There was no Tannoy announcement. There was no information being given from staff. I don't think they knew uh, what was going on. We were just seeing information on social media. You could hear people saying this is typical of the, the UK, that nothing ever works. Um, people saying this is the last thing that they wanted after a long uh, day traveling. These before and after satellite images present a stark picture of just how devastating the heavy rains have been for Brazil's southernmost state of Rio Grande do Sul. From the airport to the city to these residential areas, the river and a landmark church, the contrasting images show the damage left behind in the wake of heavy rains that submerged parts of the runway at Porto Alegre and made the parking lot look like a lake. 90 people are dead, 130 missing and 130,000 people have been impacted and become homeless due to these disruptions. Now take a closer look at the airport in Porto Alegre where this plane is partly submerged. It's not just this plane, part of the runway is underwater and cars in the parking lot look like tiny specks of floating metal. The stadium resembles a muddy pool. Rescue efforts have been hampered due to the flooding and many people are still waiting to be evacuated. Others are running out of food and water to drink. Almost half a million people in Porto Alegre are without electricity as power supply has been cut in flooded areas due to security reasons. For more such videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel Make sure you hit the like button and follow for more news updates.